Well, welcome, everybody, to The Big Picture. I'm your host, Larry Raglan, and we have got a tremendous, tremendous interview for you today. One of my great friends, Sandy and I love her so much, and you are going to love her. Many of you know her, but some of you are going to be introduced to one of the greatest women of God and creative and, and just all around amazing woman that you will ever hear or see in your life. She's lived the life of, quite frankly, I believe, five to 10 people. And we're going to hear just a little bit about her story. But before we get into our special guest, I want to remind everybody that right here on The Big Picture Live, every Monday night, Sandy and I co-host The Big Picture Live. It is a breaking news live show where we cover current events, where we're you're going to, we're going to talk about things that you're not going to hear anywhere else. You're not going to hear about it on the mainstream media. And we're going to show you what's really going on in our world. So if you're new to The Big Picture, make a note to be with us every Monday night at 7 p.m. Central time. And if you really want to get into some deep Bible teaching every Sunday night at 8 p.m., I am doing a verse-by-verse -verse teaching of the book of Revelation. People from all over the world join us live in the live chat. It is just incredible what God is doing through this because people want to know about what's going on in our day and time. And I do want to say thank you to all of our partners, our, those that subscribe to our channel. You are huge. We especially thank you to all those that made a decision to click that join button. And all you got to do is click that join button right down below this screen, and you can become a partner. For about $5 a month, you, you have the opportunity to show us that, that you just appreciate what's going on and uh, what we're doing and all the hard work Sandy and I are doing, and that means the world to us. It keeps us encouraged, keeps us motivated. Well, we're going to get right into it. We have with us none other than Miss Edie Han right after this. Miss Edie Han is a businesswoman, a speaker, media personality, filmmaker, international author, and mom. She has co-authored and, and authored and co-authored, I should say, over 25 books. She started national commercials, daytime television soaps, hosted national TV programs, developed several radio shows and vignettes across the country. In recent years, she partnered with her amazingly talented actor son and businessman Link Han to form Hand in Hand Entertainment to continue her writing in film, television, radio, and podcast. Edie also founded the Edie Han Foundation. We'll hear a lot about that on the show. And she comes from, this is amazing, y'all. You're going to love this part. She comes from an amazing, wonderful family heritage of songwriting, acting, and music. And I want you to listen to these, these names here. The Hood Hacker Presley family, her legendary, yes, I'm going to say it, I'm going to say it, though everybody on this show knows how much I love him, her legendary <laughs> cousin, Elvis Presley, uh, that she learned firsthand about paying it forward through him. I want y'all to welcome and show some love for Sandy and I. I mean, we just adore this lady, Miss Edie Hand. The crowd's going wild. You hear them? They're going crazy. I love it. I love it. Well, we are honored, honored, honored to have you, Miss Edie, with us on the program. You you know how much Sandy and I love you. Uh, we quickly, quickly learned just what an amazing person you are and what you've meant to us. So welcome to the big picture. Thank you, Larry. Pastor Larry, I am so honored to be here and be a part of your program. Well, uh, and you and Sandy both have touched my heart and your church and just meeting the women that are surrounding Sandy and helping to spread the word of the gospel uh, just touched me when I was able to be a part of a few of your programs. And thank you for being a part of my world now. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, I want to real quickly just tell everybody that's watching the big picture how we met Miss Edie. It's an incredible story. So, you know, our, my book is coming out very soon nationwide and in hardback edition. You'll have there'll be a future show where I detail that in, uh, completely. But my, my book had a limited release a few years ago that I self-published. And a gentleman in my church, uh, Mr. Michael Buckner, started telling me about this lady. She, he, he kept telling me, you have got to meet this woman. She is unlike anybody I've ever met in my life. And uh, he started telling me some of the stories that you, you guys had talked about. And then you mm -hmm. came to, uh, to one of our local uh, towns around our, uh, where we live, and I met you, and I was able to give you a copy of my book. You read my book, and it really touched your life. 
And you mm -hmm. then were moved on because of your connections and your world and how you have flowed in all the industries you've been in, were able to help us create the sizzle reel that some of you have seen for mm -hmm. my book to help promote the book to get us where we're at today. So real quickly, this is not why you're on our show, but can you just sort of take our listeners through how we connected and what that meant to you about how God brought us together? You know, your book, you know, seeing something great in someone, uh, I was moved by what Sandy saw in you as a young woman and, and the life that you had lived that had certainly changed the course of your destiny. And had she not said that to you, it could have changed your course to go another way. Absolutely. And in life, we all experience some of those moments. But if we really listen to God's spirit within us, we can make better choices. And I think that's what happened to you. God gave you something so deep to respond to her differently. So it touched me that the two of you were on this path to greatness to not only touch your community, uh, you wanted to touch the state, the country, the world, and use your talents and your stories to give someone else hope. And so therefore, that's how that was born. Yeah, and, and you, and I think I was so thankful because I, I immediately looked up to you because of the life that you had lived. And quickly, Sandy and I got to know you and looked at all the things, the amazing life that you have lived. You lived a really great life for 50 years. I mean, you're looking good for 50. So, so you, you, so much. I'm just going to accept that. As you said, I'm going to receive that. Yes. Yes. So Miss Edie, thank you for all you meant to us. And so now I want to introduce our listeners and our, and our viewers to the life of Edie Hannon. Many of the things that you got going on, tell us a little bit about, uh, before we dive into the book and before we dive into all the other ventures that God has set you on this path at this time in your life. Tell us about Edie Han. Where are you from? Uh, you know, tell us a little bit about your family. And then uh, we'll segue after that in how you got connected into uh, the media world, the Hollywood. And everything. But tell us about uh, little girl Edie Han growing up. Well, I grew up in a little place called Burnout. Now, Burnout is in northwest Alabama, nestled in a little country area not far from uh, Red Bay, Alabama, which is only about 45 minutes from Tupelo, Mississippi. Our family had 40 acres and my three brothers and I was the oldest of five. My sister came along later in life, used to ride our horses to this little Schubert's Corner uh, and we would uh, tie our horses up and go in and enjoy being with country kids, sit on a loafer's bench. But more importantly, we'd write on that sign, plum, burnt plum out, because nothing was happening in burnout. <laughs> so I can't a little there, but no, no, nothing was happening. It was burnt plum out, trust me. Plum out, plum out. For, for, all, but, for those up north, plum out means all the way. Okay, just to let y'all know. We're going we're gonna to have to interpret some of this Alabama lingo. <laughs> this is very true. And, you know, growing up as riding horses and simpler way of life, um, uh, it was very special for me to be taught by a grandmother named Alice. Mm. My grandmother was Alice Hood, and she um, married Hacker, and she came from uh, a very wonderfully talented family. And for that, for me growing up with music being made on the front porch, if they're, they had hundreds of acres of land, um, and they worked hard. You know, they picked cotton, they rode horses, they herded cattle. They milked cows. Um, they had a lumber mill. Uh, my mother was one of 12. Wow. Uh, these eight boys were unbelievable with their music making. And this comes from my grandmother's family of uh, Elvis Presley, that my grandmother. Okay, and time out, time out, time out, time out. <laughs> what, what? The listeners are freaking out right now. She just flipped out there. Just Elvis Presley, Elvis Presley. All right, we want we want you to continue, but that's where I was going because our listeners are going to want to know, you know, your lineage of music of your family. Like talking about sitting on that 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 porch playing music and all that is mm -hmm. in your DNA. Is in your DNA. So you you are not surprised when you know that you know that cousin from from Mississippi uh, just all of a sudden comes on the scene and. 
how wh- where did that play into it? Did did was all of that just did did Elvis? Because see, I've, I I don't know if you know this. I think I might have told you. I was born on Elvis Presley's birthday, so I was like uh, January eighth is my birthday. January eighth. There yeah, you go. That's, that's my birthday. So my mom was a huge Elvis fan, of course. And then of course when I was born on her birthday, on his birthday. I mean, she took that as a sign from God, okay, that her son was born on the king's birthday. So so we've studied that, and all. but all we know is just the simple life of the young boy, Elvis. But you're saying all the way on both sides of the family and everything, all of you guys were musically inclined. And there was such a gift that I, I can tell you that he did come some with Uncle Vernon. They would sit on the front porch uh, and make music with my uncles. Um my grandfather always made these huge, big pots of stew. Uh, he would catch catfish from the lake and they would fry it up. My grandmother made hush puppies. It was a very simple way. Well, we had quilts. We didn't have a lot of chairs. We sat on quilts out mm-hmm. in the front yard. But the music was so fabulous. People wow. would literally drive by and park. They respected my family and they would park at the end of the old gravel roads and sit on the top of their cars and listen to the music. That is amazing. And so my my grandmother, the very first time that I got to go to Graceland and I was a senior in high school, Elvis was a big star Mm -hmm. um, and we were staying at Graceland and we were staying downstairs in the blue room. And (laughs) it was so funny, my grandmother, now you gotta understand these are old country women and they dip snuff and they go ghost and they, they were something else. Yep. So my, my we grandmother down, the same way. She always <laughs> just put that in her bottom lip. Oh, yep. yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, and we would bring, bring black gum toothbrushes from the trees there and uh, wrap them up in tin foil. We didn't have these fancy little Ziploc bags like we do now. But anyway, we, we went downstairs to get ready for our room. Delta walked us down. And Elvis wasn't there, of course, at that time. And she said, now y'all going to stay in the blue room. And... I started looking around and I thought, wow, there's a lot of mirrors in here. And my grandmother was so upset. <laughs> she said, I, have, I don't know if I can stay in here. Everywhere I go, even in the bathroom, I have to look at myself. I can't wow. stand it. But she was just like blown away that people would want to look at themselves. That <laughs> so, <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> wow. So we, so we had, and we got, you know, just sitting up in mm. Minnie Mae's room with a red wing back chair that Elvis told us that we didn't have any money. said, but when I make a lot of money, I'm going to buy you a red wing back chair and put it in your room, Grandma, wow. or Dodger, as he called her. Um, but I remember those simpler things, walking out back when the backyard of Grayson looked like a trailer park. Wow. Um, you know, there was three trailers in the back then. And um, I never seen that many cars that anyone owned at one time. He had seven, I believe it was seven car carport. Wow. <laughs> and the pink Cadillac was there. Um but what I learned the most was, because they had the little place in the back that was where Vernon and uh, Patsy Presley, it was a double first cousin, worked in the little office there in the back, and they answered the fan mail. I was amazed at what people would send to Elvis. Oh, my I can, God. I, I can only imagine. About it. I can't talk about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. But we, any, any, I think we know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, it was something else. But anyway, that wasn't it. It was the fact that what I saw, the way he paid life forward one yeah. holiday, and I got to meet uh, the Thomas family, Danny Thomas family, the founder of St. Jude, because of this and knowing that Elvis gave his yacht to Danny. And Danny's middle daughter, mm-hmm. uh, Terry Thomas, and I became friends. And she is my only son's godmother. Wow. And, and Terry lives in Beverly Hills. And she says, I am Link's mother of the West. And don't y'all mess with him. I mean, like she shows up at the doctor's office and he says, Mother. I didn't know there were two women like you in the world. This is a little embarrassing. Oh, this is awesome. she, this is and awesome. she would go back with him to sit, talk to the doctor. She said, I'm old enough to go by myself. No, wow. I'm going with you. These were the kind of, because of Elvis, that I got to know mm-hmm. some amazing people and stand on the shoulders of theirs. And they've shared things with me. So that really made a difference to me, Larry, that I saw he loved people at yeah. holidays. I got to go before... Just the gifts I saw him giving. I have some gifts, jewelry that he gave me when I was uh, a nice. freshman in college. Girls trying to hide in the trunk of my car if they thought I was going to Grace. <laughs> and, I, you know, here my cousin and I that lived in the back, Aunt Nash, she was an Assembly of God minister. And Elvis had given her this 
big baby grand piano and couldn't even get it in the church. It was so big. Wow, wow. But, <laughs> but just little things like, yeah, you know, yeah. the, I remember Joe Esposito got us tickets mm -hmm. because my cousin, Karen Sue, and I wanted to go see, uh, we were big fans of Donny Osmond, I remember. And they said, you're at Elvis's and you want to go see Donny Osmond? <laughs> and I said, well, yeah. <laughs> so we got tickets to go and just all kind of special things because I knew Elvis. And, but more importantly, it was his Great. heart. Yeah. And he made me feel, he would tell me I was pretty when I was young. And that he said, I believe you're going to speak to the masses one day like wow. I sing to them. And little did I know that um, what I learned about the purity of the word mm. was from Grandmother Alice and Minnie Mae Presley. They kept their pearls draped over their Bibles by their bed. Mm. And I said, why do y'all do that? And she said, well, when we were growing up, we didn't have a jewelry box. And we, we would put our pearls, and they were faux, over the Bible. And we, our mothers told us that pearls were pure and that the word in the Bible's pure. And y'all just drape that over your Bibles by your little knot stands. And when come Sunday morning, they'd just pick them up and put them on, take their Bible and go to church. So that is amazing. That, that sparked in my mind of creativity of that I built things on was that a speck of grit forms a pearl and life's about irritations and un unforeseen things that can irritate us that could yet through that hard thing turn out something so beautiful mm. and that's what i felt was and, you and know ladies, that's where it led. and ladies and gentlemen i want you to understand the power of the spoken word you know we talk about is as, as you talked about in my book that you know my wife those five words when she said those five words to me how it changed my life i mean here you are talking about in this phase in your life basically your whole ministry it's about yeah. the pearls and about the grit and all of that. But these were principles and words that were instituted in you as a young girl. And, and to this day, they are still shaping you. That is the power of the spoken word. That is the, that's why we need to do everything we can do. And that's why I love to hear these kind of stories about Elvis, because if you follow Elvis, you know, you're going to see these documentaries where you know, Elvis went down the road and made some bad decisions and all this kind of stuff. You don't get to hear the personal side, and you don't get to hear his his lineage, his legacy, the people that shaped him, who they were, who he was. Down deep inside of him, that man had the Word of God in him. And you're saying that while you were at Grayson and being around your family, principles of even Elvis Presley's family and your cousins, your aunts, and your uncles are still shaping you today. That is the truth. Even my uncles, after my mother's brothers, would say, we want Edith to come to our community events. And I'd go, uh, why? And they would say, well, you speak so well, and we would like for you to do recitations. And we can hum behind you, and then we sing because you're wow. young. And, and, that, and I started doing that when I was 12 years old. And, wow. you know, you remember the song, or well, you may not, you're so young. <laughs> Oh, I received but it, that. I received that. <laughs> but it was uh, Big Bad John. Oh, of I, course I, I know that. Oh, yeah. I love that song. And yes. You know, and Jimmy Dean and on and on. They all love yeah. to sing that song to the recitation. Well, um, I would do that. And I had a very deep voice for a young girl. And so it was, I, I remember that so clearly standing up in front of a big crowd in a little community center you know, that was a big crowd to me, might have been a hundred people, right. you know, uh, but I, I just remember all those little gifts that soon became a great uh, yeah. gift to me and that it was uh, all of the, now they're all in heaven yeah. now. And yeah. I, I learned so much from each one of them and mm. I will never forget all the beautiful, as you hear, you've heard me speak some, but yeah. your wife knows better of the yeah. pearls of hope yes, and yes. and today it is my gift back before mm -hmm. i leave this earth uh, god gave me how to put my pearls on mm -hmm. get my sword up and be a warrior for him and sometimes it's not in the way you think you are going to be doing that yeah. and my and god has given me this in the last years of my life that i'm to do this in colleges mm -hmm. in churches 
Yeah. But our younger people need to know. They need yes. to have hope. Mm -hmm. Their mental health has been challenged. Yes. Um, and there are different ways to reach people. And God has given me this through the word of the pearl and the different colors of pearls and how through storytelling they listen. Mm. And they also like to know you can wear different hats and you can be cool even if you're very seasoned like me. Yes. And and yes. they they um, they like that. And yeah. I have enjoyed being around them. Yeah. I truly experienced this um, you know, I had never experienced a global classroom, but mm. from Windsor, Canada, I was the keynote speaker for a uh, for the junior college there. And but they asked some kids from Ireland, from the University of Michigan, and on and on. And wow. I was amazed at how we had this classroom, global classroom. And they taught me how before the show to click on and go down into the classroom and they could ask me questions and see me. And it was amazing to me. And I said, yeah. Oh, now I know what Elvis and my grandmother meant wow. that, um, I was to share the pearls of hope and what I learned from them. I learned from my brother, David, the gift of laughter. I learned from my brother, Philip, the tuggings on my heart. If you're hearing something pushing at you tonight or today, wherever you are, listen to it. You need to, you need to act on it and seize your moment Say it. because it may never come again. Wow. And then uh, I learned from Terry, the importance of courage. Mm. I know that grit to me says great resilience is transformative. Mm. That's so good. If you keep your head down and you keep moving and you keep talking, your nose can turn to yeses mm. that I have learned firsthand and you can be betrayed. You can be, you can have great loss. I learned from Patsy Riley that's in my book. That was our former first lady. Mm -hmm. There is a path to pain that mm -hmm. one has to overcome mm. and path to pain is different for each one of us. And she honors, her path of pain from losing her daughter, one of her daughters to cancer, just before she became the first lady of Alabama, her husband, Bob Riley was a congressman and she lost Janice that she says, I do all the things I do for abused and battered women because I think Janice would want me to do that. She would do it if she were here. We, our voice could make a difference. If you think your voice didn't make a difference, it does. You can, you can, if you lead one person, to change their life. Yeah. You have glorified God. Absolutely. And, and and I know that this is where this is going and why I have been given the opportunity to share so many women's voices. Because yeah. without men like you, we could not do that. We all need each other, no matter who you are. It just happens to be this is what my niche is and what I'm doing from my heritage uh, of my trials in life and my losses yeah. to my triumphs. And I feel refreshed at my age. I mm. thought I was done, but I'm just getting started again. I mean, <laughs> yes. I, I, I know that I have been refreshed as a four time cancer survivor yeah. and of great losses yeah. in many ways, many ways that, that you can, you can do hard things and turn them into beautiful situations. You, you really can. I tell you that there are tools to be learned from someone that crosses your path every day. If you keep your mind open mm -hmm. and I, I believe that with all my heart and Elvis believed that he was a seeker. Um, yeah. my grandmother was a seeker. Yeah. Elvis was more a seeker of knowledge, people that just didn't really know him. And you know, we all, have made bad choices in life. Sure. And, um, you know, I try to make better choices now because I try to assess the situation that I don't overreact, but that I respond. Yeah. And yeah. I don't, I don't always do it exactly right, but yeah. I do it a lot better because well, I know the, how. One of the things that, that I say a lot on this show and I say a lot in our pulpit and into my family, to my children, Life is not about what happens to you. It's about how you respond to what happens to you. 
That's what defines you. How do you respond to it? Because things are going to happen. I don't care who you are. I don't care what your last name is. I don't care how much money you have, how famous you are. A lot of times, the, the more famous and the more wealthy you become, the more prominent your problems are, the bigger they are, and the, and the more temptations you have. But it's about how you respond, and that's why I love, love, love what God is doing with your life, Miss Edie, is because the women of true grit, and the true grit is, is you know, that's how the pearl is made. The pearl is made by pressure. The pearl is made by, you know, sand rubbing all and process of time and all these different things. And so, so we, you know, you have the ministry of women of true grit and, you know, you've lived a life that w maybe we need to do another program just to talk about the <laughs> life that you live. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Edie has suffered great loss. Uh, the three brothers that she talked about, she's lost those three <laughs> brothers, uh, just other people in her life. And even as recently on January the 8th, uh, celebrating the, the king of rock and roll's birthday. You were in Memphis. I Come think on. that was just a few days before his only child, Lisa Marie, uh, passed on mm -hmm. as well. And you were there with her. We, we, I saw a picture of you when you were there at the celebration. I know that broke your heart. I know it devastated it, you. It did because I got to have a little time with her. And we were standing near the house at that last moment before she was leaving to get on a private plane. Mm. And I said, oh, Lisa, you don't look like you feel well. And she said, I don't. I'm tired. Can you hold me up? So wow. I just reached. You see in the picture, I'm holding her. And uh, I said, well, I have given. It was one of her traveling mates. Um, and I gave her. She would wanted a, a genuine Elvis book that I'd written with Ronnie McDowell because he is the voice. Mm -hmm. Priscilla picked him as the voice of Elvis when he first passed, and he's a dear friend of mine. And so we had written that book, and they sent us a picture from the plane. She fell asleep reading that book wow. on her chest. And it had little small stories, even at my grandparents' farm, of, of sitting on the front porch and making music uh, that she could remember. And I said, you know, Lisa, you know, when you were little and I got the opportunity to help babysit you with Aunt Delta, um, and I knew you only knew one speed in life and it was full, full force, just go. And I said, but I haven't been around her a lot in these years and she has was grieving greatly for her son. And ever, all the flowers that came up that day, I remember her saying, uh, put them on Ben's grave. She didn't want them. She wanted to honor him. You know, no one knows a broken heart can kill you. There's no doubt. No one is quick to judge people. Uh, I say to you, don't cast a stone until you take a look in the mirror at your own self. Yep. And with great icons, extraordinary icons like Elvis is, and with her being thrust as his only child was, um, she carried a lot on her shoulders yes and but she and i talked about we stand there about the women at true grid and i said oh we should do something together mm. and um i would love and um, we would have yeah. we would have done something for memphis for elvis and his name because she was over a lot of people didn't know she was over the elvis presley foundation and um enjoy doing things for women in communication, which that's where my scholarships are at, at the University of North Alabama, where I graduated 50 years ago. Uh, I just had an anniversary a couple of weeks ago at my college. And in celebrating that, that's why this all is important to me. Like with, uh, life is so unpredictable. We don't know yeah. if I'm gonna get off this interview and if I'll be here. But they'll know I walked here. Somebody will know I walked here. Yeah. And that's what she felt was she wanted to matter. Um, and she wanted her dad's memory to matter. And I think that uh, Austin Butler did a great job of doing that, that her dad mattered. Uh, and it was, a per it was personal for her. I only met the colonel once uh, at Graceland. Uh, Uncle Vernon introduced me to him. Um, he was a grumpy man to me, but you know, I mean, that's just my opinion, but I, I only was around him one time and um, Elvis was coming in and Lisa was running wild then. So it was, you know, I, I just jumped in and helped just like a family does. I, you don't come to take from anybody. We didn't run around with cameras. We didn't, we were asked not to, 
to take pictures or do certain things. Um, but I can tell you I have a lot of pictures in my mind. I'm glad I can still remember. I have precious memories um, that were my memories, my yeah. experiences. Um, and, um, you know, and like you said, my three young brothers, David died when Elvis was still living. And I was a senior in college. And I remember going to Graceland and that I did get to speak to him because of Minnie and Delta about that death. And David was only 19 years old. And he was the first person I ever really loved as a guy. My, my brother and I were tight. I was like another mother to him. And so someone to die at 19 in a car accident, another one to die 10 years later in another car accident at 23, another to die 15 years later with an aneurysm in the middle of the brain and to caregive. If you've never been a caregiver, it's not an easy job. And it's, it's, um, it, there were a lot of experiences that prepared me for each journey in life even with my own son and the beauty that I see and I share that he's carrying on another generation. He does films. Um, he's wrapping up the season. He's, he's been filming in Hawaii with NCIS Hawaii and he's done six shows and he's going to be on the, um, the big finale. If you all want to watch it on May the 16th, yes. you'll see L I N C link hand pop up there. They say, well, I know his mama. So that's, um, we love, being real yeah. and that's what i found no matter where i go yeah. if it's to europe if it's to you know if it's to um canada if it's to california if it's here in alabama yeah. i spent a lot of time in tennessee is people are looking for kindness hope and authenticity that's the truth uh, so there you go i, I well, feel like I, that's what i'm trying to share that is, and 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 Miss Edie, you you are continuing the voice of the legacy of those that have gone on before you, from your brothers to your parents, to your aunts, your uncles, your cousins, and and you and your son together are with with what God has done with with your production company, the things that you are doing, the people that you're helping. I'm one of them. You know, I I really think about the fact that you know for those that are wondering about our book, I. I'm able. I was signed as an author with a very powerful uh, publishing company that has decided to go all in with my book. My book is coming out hardback. It's going to have a master, a twenty. I mean, a sixteen episode masterclass with it. It's going to have a study guide, a small group study guide. But yes. I would have never gone to the NRB to meet them if you had not pushed me to pitch this movie, to pitch this book as a movie. So, so your legacy is, is coming through me and Sandy as well. You are continuing. Ma'am, say that again. I said, I'm so thrilled because that's what I learned is that if we can reach back and we can help someone and give the right wisdom, you didn't need to go off and make something until you are ready yeah. to take the right, right processing of it. I learned this, that God will give you the right plan. He will have money show up at the right time. He will have right people show up when you think there is, I can't take one more no. But you, I've watched you, you are a man of great resilience. And you are a man that will touch the masses more and more. And I'm glad I'm going to get to see it. You make a material up over here because that means a lot to me coming from you. It really does. And, and I'm so thankful for everything that's happening in your ministry, the the conferences that God is opening up for you, your books that have come out, as we've already said, you've written over 25, maybe even more, much more than that now. Mm -hmm. uh, but now we talk about uh, songs are being written, Women of True Grit, <laughs> co-wrote co with Ronnie McDowell, legendary I Ronnie did. McDowell. I mean, now we're getting ready, and we will have all these links down in the show notes where you can easily go to her website, which we'll show you in just a moment. But tell us real quick, Miss Edie, about the upcoming events that are happening, how people can plug into what God is doing in your life, what this means, what does Women of True Grit mean, the book, the people, the Benefiting Miles Scholarship Program, all of the things. Just take us through a quick rundown of how people can get involved with Edie Hand. Well, anyone can go to my edihand.com to learn more about what I'm doing. And under edhand.com, there's a bar that goes to events. You'll see some of our events. And if you want me to come to your church or, or to your college, you just reach out to us. 
uh, under the uh, event area and there's places to contact yeah there's cute ronnie we <laughs> put together the song of women of true grit my daughter-in-law sings the duet with him i'm actually wow. with him and earlene mandrell earlene's in the book of the mandrell sisters uh, they are performing this weekend in red boiling springs tennessee wow. i'll be there line dancing to and i do not want to but i am going to <laughs> please tell me with, they're going to video uh, that <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, they're streaming it so i'm about i said oh my he said now Evie may you better get ready because you're gonna have to come up here and show these women oh my god but anyway <laughs> we'll have fun we'll have fun just and that's the way elvis was he was a big jokester and so is ronnie and um he loved doing this it's his talents. I'm blessed to be with people that are far more talented than I am, but I am a part of it. With NASA next weekend, you see right there on mm -hmm. April the 1st, if you're mm -hmm. out and about on Saturday morning, you should drive over there. Wow. On Saturday morning at 1030 for an hour, we're going to show the documentary of the NASA Women of Tribute that I did on oh, public television. And the women are going to be there to answer some questions. The head of the U.S. Space and Rocket Center is in this book. Um, we have the first Brigadier General, Wilma Vaught. Here you'll see, that's going to be, like I said, April 1st at uh, 10 30 a.m. Then below, you'll see it on April the 21st. This is the first uh, mm, women's is. conference of Women of True Grit. Uh, President Bobby Knight, there in the red, is doing amazing things to help kids to not have to pay funds, helping to start women's scholarships. The funds that are raised are for the tickets there, you get a book, you get a, a Women of True Grit book, you get um, a backpack, you get some goodies, and there'll be recruiters there, like from Drum and Coal Company, mm -hmm. Alabama Power, Coca-Cola, that want to make a difference for young people and give them opportunities. Leisha, Lakeisha Hawkins is from NASA. She is the deputy director, and she and Dr. Lisa Watson Morgan, this is in the book, are putting the first woman and the first person of color on the moon. <clears throat> so she will talk about the STEM program. You should have some of your folks from church and the kids come over there because it will be amazing to have over 400 people there in the auditorium and that we will have over 10 of the women that are in the book there, even from mm. Canada. We'll talk about classrooms globally, how you can become a part from your church to go globally with this group of an extended arm of education. And, and that's every, what we need. Yes. And, and every, everything from that event is benefiting Miles College Women's Scholarship Fund. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. It's only $35 for a ticket that they've got. But the students come free if mm. they call and they get code that the kids can come free. And uh, the others that come are simply some of the corporations or different people wanted to understand what we're doing. The panelists are amazing. Uh, Senior VP from Regions is on the board. We have the head CEO of Inspire Hub, which is the largest ministry uh, hub done for ministries around the world. She will be there. And she's created my Grit Hub, which is gritihub.org uh, that was so women could join it free That's and, awesome. and spread the word. So these are the type of things that we will yeah. be doing, Larry. Yeah. So I appreciate you so much for having me. They want to learn about me in these books. They just go to edhand.com and to womenoftruegrit.org. Uh, they can't miss it. And uh, I hope you'll be uh, teaching Sandy a little bit of that. I know you like to move, so you can teach her with that song, A Line Dance of the Women mm. of True Grit. <laughs> yeah, look, look, I can't, if I do line dancing, they won't be live streaming with me. <laughs> Because I, I was the guy in the corner of the gym while everybody else was dancing. I, I don't really have that many moves, but, uh, but well, you yeah. Don't have to do you don't have to do but three steps, or I couldn't do it. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, and, you know, so you need you you need to go register for this conference right now. Get the book. All of that's going to be down in the show notes. The direct link to purchase the book, purchase all of her books, her website. Let me throw this website up here one more time. It is full of resources, ladies and gentlemen. You'll learn more about her. Of uh, a ton of videos. Uh, what I love here is you can go and you can read her bio. You can see her books. She has cookbooks, y'all. Come on now. <laughs> Somebody from Burnout. Feel the arteries hardening. because Yeah, bur bu the arteries are hardening. We did a Preston family <laughs> cookbook, and I said, oh, my Lord, who cooks this way? But anyway, it was a lot of fun. But That's it, awesome. It, it is not healthy. <laughs> 
<laughs> lot, lot of film and video. You'll just see all kinds of things from her website. So every, all of that will be in a quick direct link down below. Uh, but before I let you go, I want to just say one other quick thing is that what I appreciate is that everybody be looking for an upcoming show after this one. Uh, and if you've watched this on replay, then also just search for it. But one of your great friends is Hank and Sheila Irwin of, uh, yeah. and, and of course, you know, they are mama and daddy to some of the ones that they, they may not know Hank and Sheila's name yet, but they will, because we're about to interview them. You have made a way for me to interview them. Uh, and that will be on an upcoming show talking about all that God is doing in her life with how to raise up dreamers and, and all of these things and the, the great life that Hank has lived and now the legacy of their sons. We have the Jesus Revolution, all these different kinds of movies. These are some of your greatest friends. And, and Sheila's in the book. Sheila Irwin is in this book of Women of True Grid. And they did invite me to the red carpet event. And Andy invited my son out in Hollywood to the red carpet event. And they, that with Lion Gate, a little more private area. But, you know, when I walked out, Andy said, did Link tell you that I invited? I said, he sure did. Thank mm, you. And he awesome. said, well, I hope one of these days we're working together. And I said, okay, uh, from your mama's, from your mama's lips and my lips to your ears, his go. <laughs> That's right. Let's go. Time, listen, we got to get this thing rolling right now. I can't wait to see that. That uh, collaboration of the Irwin Brothers and Edie Hand, Hand in Hand Entertainment, my God, that's that's a that's a bestseller. That's a top movie. That's a top anything right there. There's no doubt in my mind. Miss mm -hmm. Edie, you well, are a... will love them. Your audience will love them. Your, I just want to say real quick, your audience will love them. I spoke with Sheila today, and because a friend of hers, Kim Cottrell, it, it it introduced me, wanted me to come and be on her show. She said, hey, could you meet me out in Anaheim? I said, Anaheim, California, you know I live in Birmingham. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, you know, you, if if they call you and you want to spread your territory, spread your territory. Yep, that's it. That's a good word, and that's a good word to end on. And uh, my last words to you, Miss Edie, is from Sandy and I, you are a gift to our world. You are a gift to our generation. And ladies and gentlemen, when you get a chance to hear from someone that is seasoned, and I'm not talking about age, I'm talking about life lived. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about life lived. You listen. So we listen. We listen to Edie Han when she speaks into our life. She has wisdom. She has been there. Places mm -hmm. that we dream of going, she has been there. And I want to close by saying this. I want to, I want to if it's okay, Miss Edie, I just want to speak a word over you, over your life. I, and and, I love and and I want to remind you of a scripture that is found in the book of Joel, that it says, in the last days, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. And it goes on to say, your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, meaning they will speak life. And your old men and women shall dream dreams, and your young men and young women shall see visions. And what I talk about all the time is that these young generation, they're just so on fire. They're just... They're just looking for something. They're searching for the truth. They're just looking, trying to see what is real, what is authentic. And what I want to encourage the people that are watching this, especially the younger generation, and I want to speak over your life, Miss Edie, is it says the old men shall dream dreams. The old men and women shall dream dreams. And I've studied that and studied that, and I think I've realized that that means we will still on that last day have a generation of seasoned people who are dreaming of a life that they thought was lost. Mm, I'm mm. getting emotional right now. Wondering, <laughs> will I ever see that kind of people again? Have we gone too far? And you will bring a wisdom to us, and to, 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 I consider myself part of the older generation now, but of the younger generation, will speak wisdom into us in the most critical time that we ever could. So that is why I say you are a gift. You are a dreamer and you are dreaming. You've got stories to tell. You are a storyteller, but you are anointed. You are a mighty woman of God. You are not just an author and a producer and a creator. You are a mighty woman of God and we value your voice mm -hmm. and your dream. So God is not only is he not through with you, he's gonna do more in a year of your life and has been doing it, but he's about to do more in a year in your life than he could do in 20 years of your life. That is what is ahead of you, Miss Edie. Mm. 
Thank you. Amen. Thank you. I want to. I want to pray over you. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I pray for Miss Edie. I pray for everything that her hands is touching, everything that you have put in her heart to do. I pray over women of true grit. I pray over these conferences, the books, the media, every place that she travels. God, that you would keep her safe and put her in front of the people that will receive the gift that she is. God, thank you for your anointing and your protection over her. In Jesus' name, amen. And, and if you watch and, this thinking, I'm just going to, I'm just watching a, somebody interview an author. I mean, what, what's this? You're talking about Jesus and all this. Do you know what channel you're on right now? We're going to talk <laughs> about the Lord and Miss Edie. Every time I've been around her, she does the same. So thank you, Miss Edie, for joining us on the big picture. And uh, we will, we will get some people to that conference mm-hmm. and we will get a bunch of people over to that website. And every one of you need to buy that book. Thank you. God bless you, Larry. God, bless, God you. bless you. And I want to just say to those that have watched this program and been with us, how much it is a blessing that you have been with us. If you have not already hit that subscribe button, do this, hit the subscribe button right below me. Most importantly, hit that thumbs up. That puts us in front of people that don't normally follow us. And if you decide you want to become a partner, all you got to do is hit that join button. There's other ways to give down in the, in the description if you'd like to do that as well. We appreciate it so much. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Join me every Monday night and every Sunday night for our regular live programs. Until next time, no matter who's on this program, we always remind you, we ain't woke, but we certainly are awake. See you next time on The Big Pitch. (laughs) 